Occupational welfare is a sort of double-edged sword, in the sense that it's an ambivalent phenomenon that represents a lot of opportunities for workers, for the social partners, and in particular for the trade union movement, but at the same time, it also represents a source of risks. When we talk about occupational welfare, we are looking at welfare and social protection provided at the either company level or industry level by employers, very often in collaboration with trade unions or works councils governed through collective bargaining agreements. And it can be in the domain of pensions, it can be in the domain of unemployment, family reconciliation or healthcare. This whole project is about occupational welfare in Europe and to assess to what extent the trend over the last uh, decade or so, or two decades even in some countries, has been uh, to the benefit of workers or has been contributing to a dualization or segmentation of social protection. And what we see is from our findings that occupational welfare can actually, if it's encompassing, almost be functionally equivalent to statutory public welfare. But if it's voluntary, it can actually increase um, the dualization of social protection. The evidence we have collected so far is that occupational welfare, that means precisely benefits, social benefits and uh, services provided by social partners by themselves, uh, in favor of the workers as a result of an employment contract is on the rise in many European countries. This rise of importance and coverage is not evenly distributed across the European countries. The Nordic countries as well as the Netherlands are doing quite well. They have good minimum um, public provision and on top of that they have collectively agreed um, occupational welfare whilst countries such as the United Kingdom or Germany have voluntary occupational pension schemes where you see that um, only workers in very specific economic sectors are covered, for example financial services or manufacturing. In Mediterranean countries there has not been much change, there's still a strong alliance on statutory pensions. Occupational welfare is far more than pensions and pensions should not overshadow uh, possibilities for collective agreement on important uh, daily life uh, aspects of, of welfare. The question is also what is the workplace better at offering which we cannot have through uh, public provision. Trade union uh, all around uh, Europe are a little bit squeezed between the state and the market in this uh, uh, configuration and design of uh, occupational welfare schemes. So this means that there are quite a lot of discussion internally in trade union about uh, is it the good way and the best way to go for, to help uh, and support workers. Paradoxically, the trade union movement who should be uh, the actor promoting occupational welfare at the end of the day just react and has to defend its own interests vis-à-vis -vis the state on the one hand, the hard rock, huh? and the hard place represented by the financial markets. This is a, a field that is not well covered by research and therefore we particularly appreciate uh, the comparative uh, angle on this from pro-welfare, how they have picked some country cases where you could say some of the best examples of corporate or uh, company welfare uh, is represented uh, and some where it has had uh, greater problems taking off despite uh, some uh, social partner and uh, public uh, policy efforts. I'm afraid that governments have uh, focused a lot on the sustainability of pension reforms, which means that they are concerned that we don't have enough money, so they are cutting, and we don't think that this is the right way to go. Um, the second pillar is a complement to uh, the national uh, pension system that we have in, the, in, in all the EU member countries, but it's only a supplement. It cannot be a substitute for a national system. If you go down the path of occupational welfare, be clear that you you need state regulation to regulate the area and that you need trade union involvement and collective bargaining agreements to reach a governance structure that is to the benefit of the uh, workers.
governments must really allocate the resources to our pension systems, to our welfare systems, unemployment benefits and so on. And from my point of view, this is an issue of political will. Thank you all for staying. Thank you.